everybody. How are you doing? Uh, oh, God, I didn't shave. Okay, well, there you are. Uh, so I'm here. I'm just going to come and say hello to you. My name is Doug. And I'm the beast! Yes, you are. You expected monster for that, but he didn't come. <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, wow. So, like... I'm just, well, I guess I'm a little surprised. It helps when you're stuck in portrait mode to have a finger instead of a hand. <laughs> Is that, so that's why uh, we're, no, 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 he planned it from the beginning. He got sentimental and stuff. I did. So what happened was I uh, was going through the old live streams to just have on in the background as I prepped for class. Or oh, didn't. Hey, I did. I have to prep for class every day. So as I prepped for class, I was listening to them. And then there was that uh, episode where uh, the Beast and I kind of got to know each other and he got his name. Uh, hello, Karen. How are you? So what I was thinking we would do, the Beast, is... Uh, you can call me Penguin. Yeah, is just... Uh, I was wondering if you would tell uh, me a story. i has got to put a fellow on the spot. I thought we were just going to banter. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but, you know, I think what I would like right now is to hear a story. <laughs> so we're only going to talk for 15 minutes and then we're done. No, well, yeah, probably not. I don't even know if we're going to make it to 15. Yeah, right. Unless you tell me a story. Oh, so it's to be blackmail. <laughs> yes, it is. No, seriously, if you don't want to tell me a story, you don't have to. But I think it would be cool uh, if you did. Oh, well, okay, well, I'm going to need... Well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So I'm just spontaneously going to go into my thinking spot. <laughs> okay, so uh, I do not know why my lion named Penguin just went to his thinking spot. Uh, but there we are. And so he's going to tell us a uh, story. All right. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a little boy. Could he be named Doug? What? <laughs> what are you, five? <laughs> he went right into it, too, right? It was like, oh. <laughs> it was just like, oh, boy, I want the story to be about a boy named Doug, right? <laughs> Got a little flashback there. 19... So oh, you don't have to say, let's just say the 70s. The early 70s, okay. You could say the early 70s, but we don't have to go into the details of why I reacted that. But it was pretty funny. Yes, it was. Oh, hello, Gary and Lauren. How are you doing? Okay. <laughs> I'll teach you a lesson about writing comedy right now, okay? <laughs> Trick is, be adorable and have a big goofy guy behind you. But you knew that already. <laughs> yes, I did. He did, actually. Okay, so uh, he was a very good-looking man. He still is. Right. I'm a good-looking guy. Well, are we going to tell the story or what? Okay. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Doug. He lived in civilization like everybody else does, because people live in civilization. That's why it's called civilization. But then, one day, they moved out to the wilderness, the scary outback of the United States. A land called Illinois. <laughs> hey, I, I moved to Illinois when I was little. So, <laughs> the little boy had never taken a school bus before because he and his best friend would walk to school holding hands. They were both boys, but that was acceptable in the 70s. Not as much as it would be later. <laughs> Don't you... <laughs> we held hands because we liked each other. Hey! This may not be about you. Okay. The similar thing that happened to me, we held hands because we liked each other and we walked to kindergarten every day and first grade to every day. Yes, they don't care. They want to hear the story. Okay. So, so he's taking a school bus home and it's the first time. And the, he knows he lives on 3937 Radcliffe Drive. That's where I... Shh. So... 3937, and he's taken the school bus. But he's never taken the bus before, so he keeps looking for his house. Now, this little boy was cursed by an evil witch who's anti-Semitic that he could never have any sort of visual memory. So he didn't know what his house looked like. So he looked for a sign that said Radcliffe Drive, and it was a long, long trip. 
and he had no idea where he was, and the neighborhood looked less and less familiar. I don't like this story. Can we, can we tell? No, we have to have this story. I really don't like this story. Go ahead. Go ahead, I can hear the story. All right. Thanks for killing the mood. <laughs> Make my job. Monster Puppet, he's always like, oh, hi, Monster Puppet. Let me be with everybody in a good mood and you can sign me. I get one bloody time. I get to do the story. And he's like, oh, <laughs> look, I'm sorry. Okay, right. Monster Puppet's a better puppet. No, you're a perfect puppet. You're the only one I even considered doing today with. Okay, right. So he's on the school bus, right? And it's an unfamiliar neighborhood. And he just wants some reassurance. He doesn't expect to learn anything new. He wants to be reinsured because he got in that habit because he's a youngest son. And he climbs to the front and he talks to the bus driver, an act of supreme bravery on his part. And he says, can I do the voice of the kid? Yes, you can do the voice of the kid. He says, uh, are we near 3937 Radcliffe Drive? And the bus driver looks and says, Kid, we passed 3937 Radcliffe Drive a long time ago. And he looked around and had no idea where he was. This was before cell phones or how he was going to get home. The problem is that story doesn't really have a satisfying ending. I mean, and I don't remember any more of it. But that's not the ending, because I'm telling the story. Ho ho! So, so, he says, we a long time ago. And then the bus driver said, but that's okay, because I'm going to take you to the land of the bus drivers. And so... He kept, you almost tried to narrate that. Yes, I did. You all used to be in the MC, aren't you? Admit it. I am. I usually don't get to be in the audience. <laughs> this is great. No, no, keep going. You're doing great. I'm, I'm sorry. I almost narrated it. Okay. So they drove and drove and drove and Doug saw a bus. And it didn't get any closer as they approached it in their bus because it was very far away and large and stationary. It was a giant bus. And this bus went into a giant bus. And it went down and down and they wound up in the land of the anthropomorphic buses. <laughs> really? Are we going to call it Busville? Shut up! It has nothing to do with any other TV show, right? So he's in the land of the buses and there's a bus with a chef's hat that's Baker Bus. And there's a bus with a cowboy hat that's cowboy bus. <laughs> and there's a bus that's a big old ethnic stereotype called Uncle Rebus. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if I was feeling recursive, Uncle Rebus would tell him a story and we would have that have another story, but we're not gonna go there. <laughs> Uncle Rebus has been in the Disney vault for a while. Okay, fine, let's not talk about Uncle Rebus. I just want to imitate him so badly. <laughs> Go on with the main story. Oh, now you're in charge again. I'll tell the story the way I want. So, the kid was all sad because he was in Fussville and he said, Oh, Uncle Rebus, tell me a story. I can't believe it. You're not gonna. We don't have anybody who could play Uncle Remus. So <laughs> Uncle Remus said, "I'll tell you about Bram Bus Rabbit and Bram Bus Fox and Bram Bus Bear." <laughs> and then he told him a really interesting story, which we're not going to relate. Right? Then pop off the stack and right. So now he's back. <laughs> Meeting the bus people. And the king of the buses comes to him and says, You want to return home? And the boy said, Yes, because it's really scary. 
that I don't know where I am. I don't know what to do. I don't know where my mother is. And I'm never going to get back because a bus only goes one way. So anyway, king of the buses, what can you do? And the king of the buses says, Young Douglas, you had the power to go home all along. And he looked at his feet and he had shoes on that were ordinary. It was a red herring. But what he did have the ability of was being cute enough he could knock on a stranger's door and say, I have no idea where I am. <laughs> you know, I've forgotten, but I do think that's what happened. Oh, God, I don't remember. I have no memory of this, but that has to have been what happened, Troy. Because I did get home. So the boy in the story knocks on a stranger's door and says, Hi, I'm Doug. I'm in second grade and I have no idea where I am. <laughs> he knew his phone number, though, because it was easy to remember. 312-498-5178. Why is that number easy to remember? I have no idea. <laughs> But he, right, he was just all like, oh, yeah, I know what this. <laughs> Anyways, so go on with the side. Now I do want to hear. So he calls his mom from the king of the bus's phone. The phone is shaped like a bus. In fact, the decor is really bus oriented. Pictures of buses holding hands. Walking to bus school. Their slightly slow nephew called Short Bus. <laughs> he was short! <laughs> Sorry, it's just... Wow. Okay. So... It was basically a land of bus-oriented stimuli. <laughs> so, the king of the buses said... <laughs> it's not for mortals to enter the kingdom of the bus and your mom can't pick you up. Ooh, a twist. Okay. I'll be the mother. <laughs> so that's it. Your kid is going to be with us forever. And now I'm the mom, and he's the king of the buses. Vroom! Okay. So I said, Esther said, his mother, he said, You don't know what it's like to be poor. Yes, I do. I came from humble beginnings. No, no, no. Because if you knew, if you knew what it was like to be poor, you would help me get my son. This was a level three guilt spell, but it didn't work on the king of the buses. Aha! I just feel sorry for your wife. What? I, no, nothing, nothing. Wait, no, what did you mean? No, someone who would treat a stranger this way must not be a very good husband. Stop that. I feel sorry for your wife. I'm a great husband, and here, I'll return your kid. And so then the king of the buses... Room. <laughs> You're narrating. <laughs> well, if you start acting like the king of the buses, somebody has to narrate. I can do both. It's really hard to narrate and also be a cast member. You know, nah, I'm not going to go there. Monster Puppet's more meta than I am. I just wanted to tell the story. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and end it. So the king of the buses took the little boy back home to his mother. And the mother told the boy to look at the house some more to be able to recognize it, which the boy did not succeed at. <laughs> to this day, he could not describe this house <laughs> or the one he's sitting in. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, there's something I can describe. What, what is something that you can remember? I can remember how you look, Penguin. I can remember how you look. And you're very hard to draw, and I've drawn you a few times. And I've gotten really good at remembering what you look like. So does a house matter as much as a man's daughter's finger puppet? You're good. Thank you. I mean, Esther would have been proud of you. <laughs> yes, she would. She would be, no, she'd be ashamed that you were talking to puppets. Yes. And that you were broadcasting it. Yes. To a lot of people. Eh. Including some Goyim. Yes. So, no, I take it back. She would not be proud 
of a single aspect of what is going on right now. No, the way I laid on the kilt. No, no, no. It wouldn't mitigate it. There is absolutely nothing about what's happening at this moment that your mother would say, I'm proud of you, son. I beg to differ. Allow me to exchange one ethnic stereotype for another. Go on. I will entertain your argument. I can't entertain an audience, but I can entertain an argument. No, I think you're doing pretty well. I'm entertaining you, but you're easy. <laughs> Here, how to make Doug laugh. Step one, be a puppet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me have that established. I will entertain... See, Monster Puppet would have lost the thread by now. He would be somewhere else. And I'm remembering because I am plot-oriented. I also like milkshakes. Okay, yes, you established that. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure people knew. <laughs> Where's your accent? Right, oi, I'm... <laughs> I can't keep up, man. So, what were you saying? <laughs> you, you might have done better just ignoring the accent issue again instead of calling it out. No, it's his way. <laughs> yes. Everybody reaches the Tao their own way. Mine was cocaine, yours is being sweet, and his is doing this thing he does. Anyway, re, re calling his mother. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, talk about Doug's mom. She would be proud of him right now because she's proud of every goddamn thing he does. Yeah, that's true. He would just do anything and she'd be like, oh, that's so good. Put it on the fridge. Right. That's a good thought, Rebuttal. Please. That's just not true. That's not what she was like. It's what you remember her being like by a demeanor. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Mom loved me and said I was perfect and all that, but no, she did not she was not too kind to my artwork as far as respecting it. She tried to sell in a garage sale the blackout cup thing that he made to hold candles and during a blackout. <laughs> and when he got mad she said, Don't worry, no harm done, it didn't sell. <laughs> So, no, she would not be proud of this moment. <laughs> Counterclaim? Go for it. <laughs> then Douglas would explain that he's making people happy and... Oh, I get to say this word. What word? Oh, yeah, what I say it. I've been wanting to say it since I came alive. Okay. <laughs> he's keeping people amused. <laughs> so that counts as something... He'll say, showmanship is in my blood, mommy. <laughs> Don't make Doug's life into the jazz singer. That's offensive to all jazz singers. That's offensive to every letter of the alphabet that is used in the phrase jazz singer. It's, it's offensive to life at all. Hey, what can I say? Showmanship is my blood, penguin. Right. <sighs> There's not going to be a cut line, is there? I was waiting for one, and it's not happening. There'll be a cut. There's always a cut line. Yeah. The cut line will be there tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for watching. We actually did hear a story with a beginning, middle, and end, and it was a happy ending. I got in. I'm not, I didn't think I'd get a pot. Yeah, of course you knew you would. Yes, I'm kind of the brain. I'm the funsy. <laughs> I was the funsy. Now I'm the Richie. <laughs> That's okay. What are we, um, okay, to you, Ralph Mouth. <laughs> Ralph Mouth? That was a character on the show, Happy Days. Oh, I don't watch television. Or as I call it, the telly. <laughs> I did watch Downton Abbey. I was in it, you know. Really? Yes. I was a dust cloth. It isn't the size of the part. It's how you play it. Okay. Well, I didn't know you were in Downton Abbey. That's kind of cool. 
Did you see Judy Dench? More like Judy Winch! Oh, wow. I saw some things a man isn't supposed a woman's not supposed to see. Oh, monster puppet. What are you calling? I've been thinking. You call me monster puppet. That's twice. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna go while well, the getting's good. That bus has failed. Okay, the bus has failed. That ship has driven. Okay. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a very good day.